Um, I had a very grand idea, not everybody knows this, a grand idea when young Warwick Fairfax stuffed up Fairfax, which was a, originally a, a private company, and it went public, and uh, young Warwick uh, decided he was going to buy it back for the family. Uh, he didn't count on the fact that uh, uh, Mr. Keating was busy putting interest rates up through the roof. And by the time he uh, had all his bits and pieces together, the interest rates were climbing through 22%. And uh, literally, Fairfax went broke. And he lost the company. Uh, a terrible thing to have to go through life, you know, sort of almost 150 years of tradition, and he lost the company. Anyway, I sort of looked at this, and uh, Fairfax back in those days owned um, the Seven Network, Woman's Day, The Age, the Sydney Morning Herald, the Financial Review, the MacSat satellite system, which fed Macquarie News throughout the entire country. It owned 2GB, uh, 3AW, 4BH, uh, 5DN. Anyway, I took to the Premier at the time, uh, the idea that we, here in South Australia, could buy it. Because it was a fire sale. I wasn't interested in the rest of it, but I thought to myself, uh, uh, John Bannon, look, we could pull this off and 5DN would be the key station of the Macquarie Network. Anyway, I took it to him and he took it to his people. And, um, you know, I'm not a, a socialist, but I tell you what, uh, he was an entrepreneur, or is an entrepreneur, because he said, yes, I like the idea, let's do it. So Vex Oberdan and I, who was a developer, he was very interested in all the real estate. I was interested in the radio assets. And uh, John organised, and I still have it at home somewhere, he organised a line of credit to take to Sydney to try and get the Macquarie Network it was $100 million. Do you know what that looks like on a piece of paper? <laughs> Very impressive. Anyway, we, we had the backing of the government and we were going to do it. We lost it by about 10 million because we figured that I had 100 million and uh, then there was the stamp duty. <laughs> so I couldn't go over 100 million. I had no money. So uh, we lost it by about 10 million. And the guy who bought it was one of these white shoe kind of brigade fellows from Queensland. And he did it, he bought it on the basis that he promised in blood that he would not sell down the network. We would not have sold down the network. He said, we will not sell down the network. The ink was not dry on the contract, but he rang me and he said, uh, look, you've lost the main game, but how about buying 5DM? Well, I couldn't take that to John Bannon because that doesn't do the, wasn't part of the formula. So I knew a bloke called Alan Scott and he was a good media man and had uh, the Border Watch and uh, Channel, whatever it was in uh, Mount Gambia and uh, a radio station there, 5 NU, I think it was, wasn't it? 5 uh, SC. 5 SC, yes. Yes. SC yep. And uh, he said, yep, I like it. He was a very sparky, forceful man with chutzpah, Alan Scott. So um, I only had, personally, uh, a house. That's the only asset I had. So I put that on the line and uh, borrowed the money from the bank, used the house as security. Uh, and that's the house I'm still living in, thank God, because we almost lost it. And uh, we bought it and uh, I, it, it ran very successfully and no problem until um, Alan sold 30% of his sharehold. I only had 10%. By the way, never have 10% of anything. <laughs> never. You have, you have all responsibility and no control. Anyway, uh, Alan uh, came in one day and he said, look, I tell you what, uh, the, the, the guys at SGIC, I've just sold my 30% uh, th of my 90% I've sold to SGIC. And this is back in the state bank days. You know, this is when they were really kind of quite crazy. 
they were buying things that they knew nothing about. But anyway, it was, wasn't their money, it was public money, so they, I guess they didn't care too much about it. Anyway, they, um, uh, they uh, uh, took over the 30% share, then immediately started influencing Alan to get an FM license. Because FM is the future. It's modern. You can't just be talk. Talk is expensive. You know, you've got to have producers. Just get a whole bunch of records. See, I heard this at 2GB when I was a kid. They did this at 2GB as well. They never learn. People never learn from history. Anyway, they, um, uh, they convinced Alan. I was the managing director of the whole company. And uh, I said, Alan, I can't take this station FM. There's nowhere to go. You can't go hits and memories. You can't go rock and roll. You, you can't, you know, you've got, and apart from anything, you don't have any expertise within the building to play music. It's not what we do. Oh, he said, don't worry about it. And I remember they had a, a, a campaign because I, as I pushed them, I resigned as managing director uh, and soon to be fired as the bloke who did the morning show because why do you want a morning talk show if you're a music station? Anyway, uh, they had a, a campaign. Uh, people did ask them uh, what they were going to do, what sort of music were you going to play because it seemed to be important to the people who knew and uh, the uh, people who didn't know decided that they'd cover all bets by having a, a positioning statement for the station. Uh, which went something like, um, the sound you've been missing. <laughs> and they figured, well, that's all right, that'll cover anything. Because <laughs> they didn't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, 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 um, the revenue wasn't flowing through the door because I think people had the same reservations that I had. And uh, they made a, a, a fatal mistake. Uh, I still had 10%, so I was going down the tube as well. Um, they made a fatal mistake because the sales weren't going terribly well for the launch of this new uh, 102.3 FM model. And they um, uh, decided to go out to the marketplace and say, OK, uh, we believe, we're rating 16 now, we believe with the FM license we'll be rating 23. OK, so uh, we'll guarantee you, you buy time on the news station, you buy that time, we guarantee you a rating of at least 19, that we will be 19% of the market, or your money back. You know what they came in at in the first survey? Somebody here will remember. Three. Three. With lots of excuses. Anyway, um, I got a call from uh, a guy called John Martin, who was the head of Hoyt's Media, who were having their own troubles with uh, their East Coast FM stations, uh, Triple M and uh, Eon, I think it was, in Melbourne. And they owned 5 AD. And John said, well, congratulations on, on getting the FM license at the auction. You only paid six million. We bid four. You paid six. By the way, SDIC gave the company, First Radio Limited, gave the company six million dollars. Gave. Didn't loan. You think to yourself, hell, that's public money. It's an insurance company investing in radio stations. Well, anyway, they did. But none of those people, none is around now, so I, I can't be too churlish about it. But, and to get back to your question, which is, as I say, it's a long story. <laughs> I forgot the question. <laughs> How did I get 5DM? Well, you see, this is the bit where I lost it. And then John said, would you like to buy 5AD? And I said, John, I have no money. I have no job. My wife has just left me. Uh, I'd love to buy 5AD. I, I just don't see. Oh, he said, look, 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 you don't need money. This was the 80s. You don't need money. And I said, well, 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 how is this going to work? And he said, well, you have 10% of the newest FM station in Australia. We'll take that as full deposit. And I said, but hang on, 5AD is number two in Adelaide. It's very successful. Uh, these people are not, and I've resigned so I can speak freely. Um, <laughs> you, you want to take my wine? <laughs> uh, these people are not going to make it. This is even before the survey came out. 
And uh, he said, no, 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 no. We, 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 they'll get it right eventually and they'll be an FM easy listening station and that'll be the end of 5AD. And I said, well, I think you're wrong, but if you want to sell me 5AD uh, uh, on the basis that I've got no money uh, and you'll help me into it, and uh, they did. So I got 100% of 5AD, which was the best thing that ever happened to me. Wonderful staff, fantastic format, uh, a, a great uh, historic radio station, and no one had mucked it up over the years. And uh, from that, uh, we, 102.3, which was the old 5DM, um, swung in the breeze for probably six years. Then I went in and basically bought it for a dollar. Because they, they were bleeding terrible amounts of money. But the deal I did with Alan was that, um, because by this time SGIC had given him their 30% back just to stop the bleeding and the bad publicity. And um, uh, I gave him 30% of a really big company, very big successful company, in exchange for his failed FM music station. So we then proceeded with our great team of people to move uh, our format of uh, easy listening music over to FM, where it was hugely successful. Then we had an AM station that we could convert to a talk station, and then for a period of about three years, we had the number one FM music station and the number one AM talk station, which was a wonderful, wonderful time of my life. Um, long answer. I'm trying to ask another question. No, I can understand that. <laughs> I can understand that. You know, if, if you would, at, at another stage during the year, if you'd love, if we'd love to have you back again, and there's so many more things I'd love to talk to you about, Jeremy, if, if the people here would like to have you back well, no, again. I'd be delighted. And it's going to be wonderful. And, uh, Gary, can you grab that on top of the mixer, please? Um, yes, that would be wonderful. We, uh, thank you so much for your time, Jeremy. And uh, Caroline, thank you so much for, for, for coming along today thank you for and, and nice, talking to us. Nice questions, I'm grateful. And that's Gary, but he'll, he'll sort that out with you. Oh. Um, for supporting support that, Gary uh, would like to give you this. Gary's our Deputy Chair and he takes thank you. Daisy's place. Um, oh, thank you very much. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, look at that. He's got hold of it. I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. Yeah. Can you explain is that a certificate of appreciation? That's a certificate thank of appreciation you. for... But I, I think the Support Act name is just so clever. It is. It's a great, and great name. A wonderful, wonderful a call. Tour. It is. Absolutely. And we would dearly love to have you back again. Thank you very it, much. There's just so many other things that are, are itching to ask you about. But, uh, of course, time restraints, etc. No, 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 no. You've been very patient so. and kind to listen to all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Jeremy Cordell. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>